Inside Huntsville with Brenda Martin, a conversation with department heads at City Hall on streets, ball fields, public safety, and more. And also with our community partners that add economic security, support education, and enhance the city's quality of life. Hello, I'm Brenda Martin with Inside Huntsville. Thanks for joining me today. As you know, the purpose of our show is to highlight our city's management activities and the many Huntsville city partners that makes us the number one city in the state of Alabama. While education is at the forefront of this well-known recognition, Huntsville is fortunate to have one of the top historically black land grant universities where teaching, research, liberal arts, vocational fields, and service reflects the uniqueness of Alabama Agricultural and Mechanical University. My guest today is the 11th president of this notable institution of learning, Dr. Andrew Hugini. Welcome, Ho Dr. Hugini. I'm sorry. <laughs> How are you? Couldn't get I, that out. I'm doing quite well, Ms. Martin, and well, thank you so very much for having me th today. Well, we're, we're fortunate to have you. We've been wanting to do this for a while now. Well, now, one of the questions that I wanted to, uh, to ask you, for those who are not totally familiar with what a land-grant university is, share that with us. Certainly. Well, the land-grant universities started in the 1800s. Uh, there are actually two different land-grant universities, what we call the 1862 land-grant university and the 1890 land-grant university. The name simply comes from the legislation that established them. I see. Uh, if, you, if you go back historically, e education was primarily for the elite. Uh, but in the development of this nation, it was understood that if we were going to be the country that we wanted to be, it was necessary that education needed to be available to the masses. Uh, and therefore, they created these land-grant universities, given the fact at that time that the uh, primary industry in the country uh, was farming. And so they created these institutions that would support uh, the economic development that was present at that time. And so we, we then created what were called land-grant universities, the first being 1862. Uh, however, in the South, mm -hmm. uh, the South did not allow African Americans to attend uh, the existing 1862 institutions. And so the 1890 legislation provided that in those places where African Americans could not attend the existing 1862, they created a separate institution, the 1890. Uh, so that you would still have land-grant opportunities available irrespective of, of, um, of color. And so now we have, uh, for example, in the state of Alabama, we have two land-grant universities. We have Auburn, that's the 1862, and Alabama a and University, that is the 1890. Of course, we work together. Sure. Uh, we have, for example, uh, we're one of the few states, we do not have a separate extension program. Mm -hmm. It's the Alabama Cooperative Extension System uh, and so Alabama A&M and Auburn, we share that together. So you work together. We work together That's in, great in to that know. regard. Now, the other is that, you know, given that we are about economic uh, development, mm -hmm. as the country's uh, economic engines have changed, so has the mission, so has the programs that we offer at the land-grant university change over time. Mm-hmm. Dr. Hugini, as the 11th president of Alabama A&M, you have just done so much. It's a, lot, a lot has gone on under your presidency. Um, talk about the various programs that, um, that many of the students are, that, that attend Alabama A&M are doing. Certainly. Uh, we, we have uh, over 40 plus undergraduate programs. Uh, at Alabama A&M University. In addition to that, we have master's and doctoral programs. Uh, we have a couple of new programs. Mm -hmm. uh, again, as I indicated, we continue to evolve and to change based upon what the needs are uh, at the given, a given time. We also want to reflect those needs in the community in which we find ourselves. And so we have some new programs, for example, in the area of logistics and supply chain management, material and systems engineering. Mm -hmm. uh, we have programs in entrepreneurship, uh, that, that those are new. We have animal bio, biotechnology, plant biotechnology. Uh, we have uh, sports management. Uh, we have communication specialists. Mm -hmm. And so there, there are, are a large number of degree programs all going back to who we are as a land-grant um, institution. 
Uh, we are very, very strong in the STEM disciplines. Uh, the STEM disciplines are science, uh, technology, engineering, and, um, and mathematics. Um, that's not to say that's, that those are the only areas, but again, those feed directly into uh, the land-grant mission, and so we, we are quite proud of, of our uh, accomplishments there. One of the little-known facts about the STEM disciplines at mm -hmm. Alabama a and University is that when you consider all of the institutions in the state of Alabama, when it comes to minority STEM majors, that is being enrolled and graduated, Alabama A&M University graduates more minority STEM majors than any other institution in the state of Alabama. That is fabulous and to that's, know. That's not that's really not, known. That's not that's known. not really known oh because my. we are a small institution mm -hmm. compared to others. We only have a, right around 6,000 students, but we are very, very strong uh, when it comes to that area. And if you, for example, were present at our commencement, you would see the large number of students that, that uh, graduated in, uh, in, in those areas. Right. And so we are, we are quite ple pleased and happy about that accomplishment. Well, now, how do you go about recruiting your students? Um, it, it's a multi-task, uh, a multi-format um, form, that we actually um, do with recruitment. Obviously, we have a division that's responsible for that. Um, we, we did some restructuring and recreated enrollment management, which would put together all of those areas that feed into uh, enrollment. But we approach enrollment from the standpoint that it is a university responsibility. Mm -hmm. Yes, that office is, is one that uh, will uh, get the applications, process the applications, but it is the responsibility of the institution uh, and we rely on our students because at the end of the day, your best recruiters are the students that you have at the university. They're the ones that tell the story. They go back to their communities and encourage others to come. We rely on our alumni mm -hmm. because the alumni represent the product of the university. And so sure. as individuals see alumni such as you and others, they say, well, you know, I think I consider Alabama a and yes. University, and so we rely on our alumni to help us. And then we do something uh, each year, it's called the Presidential Bus Tour. And it is, to me, it's one of the highlights of the year. I just enjoy doing it. <laughs> That's great. We get on the bus, and on that bus we have, of course, uh, the, I, I go, the First Lady accompanies, uh, accompanies me as well, uh, our student leaders. We have yes. our queen, we have our SGA president, we have our ambassadors to go. We have representatives from the various colleges. We have our faculty, we have our staff. And we board the bus, we go all the way down to Mobile, Alabama, and we work our way back to Huntsville. It's a week-long effort. We stop at various high schools. And when we stop at the high schools, we then present to those students that have been accepted to Alabama a University and those students that have qualified for scholarships we present them their scholarships in their high schools in the presence of their peers. Oh my. And while we're there, we also do recruitment. And so we encourage others, if you've not considered Alabama a and University, you may want to consider coming to uh, our institution. One of the things that we always make a point of doing is we are certain that we have stops in the Black Belt area. Okay. So we stop, you know, and at uh, those uh, high schools there. R.C. Hatch, Southside, Selma, to be sure that we are, are being inclusive uh, as an institution. One of the responses that we receive quite often from persons in that area, no other institution has ever That's stopped mm. to encourage our young people. And so as a result of, of the efforts that we've had at the university, we are, we are pleased that for five consecutive years, we have had an enrollment increase. Uh, we've had two record freshman classes. Uh, fall of 2015, mm -hmm. we broke a record for the university. We thought that record would hold for a while. Fall of 16, <laughs> we exceeded another? that record. <laughs> and so I don't know what fall of 17 wonderful. will hold, but uh, enrollment is going well. And uh, we, again, we are focused on realizing that it is a university effort relative to re uh, recruitment. So did you bring this idea with you when you came? I mean, I don't, I don't recall hearing uh, any other university or uh, 
institution doing anything like this. this that's fabulous. It, it's a great idea, and I wish that I could take credit for okay. it. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, I'm the person that uh, was willing to embrace it, but it actually came from one of the alumni of oh, Alabama no kidding. University. Okay. A person by the name, and I'll give you the name, and you'll understand why it's successful and why we continue to do it. Her name is Dr. Bernice Richardson. Oh, yes. And, okay. And so, <laughs> Now, the Richardson thought it would be great if we would do this bus tour. Yes. And uh, so, of course, she's uh, very uh, persistent. Yes. And, and um, I'm, I'm pleased that uh, we listened. And so it has evolved. Uh, we've modified it uh, each year, but now it is what is expected of Alabama a University. Part of your whole program. Part of our program. Part yes. of the recruiting. That's great. You've got a lot of new construction going on. And um, tell us about that. Oh, that's exciting. That is very, very exciting. We are in the process of implementing our, our master plan. We were fortunate uh, to receive uh, funding from the U.S. Department of Education mm -hmm. through the HBCU Capital Access Program. We received a loan for $96 million. Uh, that is the largest single loan they've ever given to any institution in the state, in this country. In the country? In the country. It's oh the largest. What we were able to do with that, uh, and it's the same thing you would do in your personal finances, the interest rates were so low, and we had existing uh, debt on the books, so we were able to take that $96 million and restructure some of the uh, existing debt, which allowed us to have some savings. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we used those savings plus some additional dollars to leverage an additional $32 million to construct our new residence hall. And so when you drive down Meridian, what you see yes. is this beautiful building going up, <laughs> uh, and we do expect it to be ready for the spring of, of 18. It's 580 beds, uh, and so the students are excited because they were involved in certain aspects of it. Everyone is just happy about changing the face of uh, not only Alabama A&M University, but changing the face of, of Meridian. Of Meridian. It's, it's changing yes. the face of Meridian. But in addition to that, that's not the only project that we have. We just had ribbon cutting for three buildings that we did significant improvements to, mm -hmm. to the tune of $7 million. Um, we restructured um, Council Hall. Oh, Council Hall okay. is the building that's named in the honor of our founder, Dr. William Hooper Council. It was a student residence hall, but we have now converted it to a student support center and housed in that student support center, we have our TRIO program, we have our retention and persistence program, and we have the Confucius Institute that's located yes. there. Um, and so we spent about a million dollars and it has a wonderful area for tutoring and other supports. In addition to that, we have done major renovations and upgrade to Carter Hall, which is our science building. Mm -hmm. um, and, we, and the third building uh, was our student union building, Ralph Lee that we did considerable upgrades to, so we have a modern facility there. We still have two others that will be uh, restructured and enhanced during this uh, phase, and that's going to be McCaleb, which was the old vocational oh, okay, building. okay, yes. It's going to be um, re renovated. And then once we complete the construction of our new student residence hall, we're going to take Thigpen Hall off for about a year and a year and a half mm -hmm. and do major renovations there mm -hmm. uh, to enhance that building. So it's it's a wonderful time to be at Alabama a and University with the, lots of things going lots on. Lots of things going <laughs> on there. Yes. That's great. Uh, something else I want to talk about. In uh, 2012, the university embarked on a capital plan and you called it Imagine oh. the Future. And you were able to announce recently that uh, the goal has been realized. Talk a little bit about that. Actually, the goal was exceeded. Exceeded. Uh, exceeded. Okay. Uh, this is the first capital campaign that we've had in the history of the university. Uh, and so we were conservative in what we thought we might be able to do over that period of time. So, so the initial goal we set was $16.25 million. How much? 16, 16. 16.25 okay. million. Mm -hmm. And we thought that's an amount that we could raise over that period of time. Well, after we uh, started, we found, well, um, I think we can do a little better. And so we exceeded that goal. 
And then we established another goal. It was $22,187,500. And we exceeded that goal. Did you really? And so ultimately we ended up um, uh, over $25 million in the first capital campaign. And we announced that at our gala that was held uh, back during last month. Uh, some significant things happened as a result of this. I'm not certain that this is historic, but we had three Greek letter organizations to give gifts of $100,000 or more. Oh my. We have the Omega Sci-Fi Fraternity, uh, the, these are the graduates of the university, uh, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority, and Delta Sigma Theta. All of them are gifts of $100,000 or more. In addition to that, we had the largest single gift slash pledge in the history of the university, $1 million from Charles Barkley. And so these are uh, phenomenal. Charles Barkley, the, the... Yes, that Charles Barkley. Did he? Yes, yes he did. He, he committed a million dollars to Alabama a University, and I think the other was Clark Atlanta. I love Atlanta. it. Wonderful. Um, fortunately, you know, when you get gifts of that, that size, it's because of relationships. Yes. And so the chair of our capital campaign, John Hudson, he and John Hudson are very good friends. Okay. John served on our board, and he's a graduate. And so because of that connection, we were able to get that, uh, that phenomenal gift. And so the capital campaign was very successful. Um, we, of course, will be doing another capital campaign, but we have a smaller project in between that we're working on. And that is we'd like to have a new video board in Lewis Cruz. And mm -hmm. so now we have begun a million dollar campaign mm -hmm. to uh, have that uh, installed. And during the night of the gala, we received our first uh, gift uh, from the McIntoshes, uh, Ronald and Patricia oh, McIntosh. Yes, they yes. A gift yes. of $25,000 to kick off that campaign. So we're very excited. Uh -huh. We're very, very excited about um, what, what's taking place. And you know University. what's exciting too is that your alumni give back. That is phenomenal. One of the things we notice is that the uh, percentage giving among uh, alumni since this campaign started has increased from 1% to well over 7%. Oh, no kidding. Uh, and that's, that, now one may say, well, 7% is still low, but, but it's, that is It's quite, an increase. It's, it's an <laughs> increase, yes. but it also is uh, in line with what the giving percentages are at other institutions. Oh, is that right? To, yes, okay. comparable to Alabama and Wonderful. Yes. Talk about students. You just had your 2017 spring commencement. Talk a little bit about that. Again, a very exciting time. I, I always say there are two times of the year that I get very excited. That's in the fall of the year when students are arriving, you know, to see the eager young persons coming to the campus and uh, wanting to receive a degree. And then in December and May when we have commencement and our students are, have achieved their, their goals. Uh, this year we uh, awarded 534 degrees uh, in our spring commencement. No kid, 534. Yeah, 534. Wow. Uh, in our spring commencement. Of those numbers, uh, 296 were uh, to the graduate students and the others were, I'm sorry, 296 to the undergrad and the others to graduate students. To graduates. Mm -hmm. um, a very interesting statistic though about the undergraduate students. Mm -hmm. um, of the undergraduate students, 55% were females but 45% were males, almost 50-50. Almost 50-50, and that is significant. That is significant. Yes. That is significant that we and had. It's good to hear. It's good to hear. 45% <laughs> of the students in that class, 45% of those students That's were phenomenal. males. Mm -hmm. um, our students continue to do well. Uh, we tracked some statistics this year in terms of where they were relative to um, job opportunities because yes. one of the things that we are proud of is that we are ranked as uh, one of the institutions with a high return on investment uh, in the state of in the state of Alabama. We are ranked in that that uh, top top tier of institutions where uh, there is a good return on your investment. And so we've kind of just tracked where our students were. Forty three percent of our students had already secured employment. Mm -hmm. um, another eleven percent of those students are going on to graduate school. Uh, two percent are going into the military. And so we also tracked, you know, what are, what are some of the job offers the students are getting? Yes. Uh, Eleven of our students, uh, 11 students 
had offers in excess of $70,000, and the highest was for $78,000. Oh, my goodness. So that's a fairly good return yes, on investment. Yes, it is. Yes. And, uh, again, these are preliminary numbers. Uh, we know they'll be higher by the time that um, and this is just June, so students are still uh, pursuing job opportunities. Sure. And we think the numbers will be higher once it all settles in. And it speaks well for the, uni for the university as well. It does. You know, our marketing tagline now is start here, go, go anywhere. anywhere. <laughs> and, yeah. and certainly uh, that is becoming <laughs> more and more evident. Uh, as a matter of fact, our speaker for the commencement was Shanaria Rocker. Um, that name may not ring a bell, but she's a graduate of Alabama a University. Uh, and she is the vice president for human resources of Honda, of, of, of Holly Davidson. Oh, no kidding. Yes. Oh, yes, she's okay. vice president of human resources for mm -hmm. Holly Davidson. So you have a chance to bring back one of your own. And when you say that you can start here and go anywhere, persons can actually see. They can see it. The evidence that that is true. They can see it. That That's wonderful. It. Yes. Well, talking about as you're preparing the student body for uh, this globally competitive world, for the past six years, you've partnered with the Confu Confucius Institute of China. Tell us more about that. I had an opportunity to sit in on one of your uh, sessions, and uh, quite interesting. T talk a little bit about that. Well, we, we clearly understand that uh, preparing our young people to be competitive, this, this is going to be a global market. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be just competition within the United States of America, but a globally competitive society that they will have to function in. And so a part of that is to expose them uh, to other countries, other cultures, and um, other economies. Uh, we all know that, uh, as it relates to economies, that you know, the United States and China are the number one and two economies in the world. And so we were fortunate to uh, be able to partner with Nanjing Forestry University, which is located in, in, in China, and they are our sponsor institution. They collectively coming with us, we were able then to um, have established on our campus the Confucius Institute. There are only 107 of those in the entire United States of America, mm -hmm. so they're not, they're not easy to come by. The intent of those is to acquaint persons with the culture, the economy, uh, the mores of the country, uh, the language. Uh, and so, for example, on the campus of Alabama a and University now, we have courses uh, where persons can learn the language no kidding. of China. Oh, wow. uh, we partner with the school district, uh, Providence, uh, and, and some of the high schools, again, providing those opportunities for um, high school and elementary uh, children to, uh, to be a part of that. We had a group of administrators from Huntsville uh, School District that went uh, to China last year oh, no as, a, as a part of this. So uh, it's not just Alabama a and University. Uh, this is open to the entire community. I see. Uh, so that, that everyone has an opportunity to understand the culture of, uh, of China. Of China. And uh -huh. the economy of China. Uh, we have, we'll have a group of students going to China this summer. They do uh, what was called an undergraduate research opportunity in China. And so, and then, uh, I will be going to China again. No kidding. And so we're okay. looking forward to it in the latter part of June. We'll be going to China again for a visit because we have to have what a required meeting of our uh, Confucius Institute each year. I see. And one of the meetings uh, takes place in the United States and then one of the meetings has to take and, place in China. So uh -huh. we're going to China for our uh, meeting with the Confucius Institute, our required meeting. Mm -hmm. There's so much to talk about regarding Alabama a and and I am so excited that you took the time to come and talk with us today. My producer is telling me to wind it up, wind it up, and uh, but we're going to certainly have you on again. I, thank you so very much. As you said, there is a lot going on at Alabama a and University. It, it's an exciting time. And, um, you know, we didn't get a chance to talk, for example, about the wonderful service activities that our I students are I know, I so know. So that's... I'd love to come back and gonna share Going to have to have you more. back. Very Going to have to have you back as uh, today, uh, you know, under your leadership, uh, Dr. Hugini, the campus is thriving and producing effective citizens. And as you say, 
They go everywhere. They go everywhere. <laughs> they go start everywhere. here and, and they go, go everywhere. everywhere. Yes. That is so good. That is so good to know. Well, that's my show for today. I'm Brenda Martin. Thanks for joining me. See you next time on another edition of Inside Huntsville.